the Grand Boulevard leads to the Provincial Legislature Building, where, surrounded by portraits of his predecessors, the Lieutenant Governor, David Onley, has his office. But there have been some intriguing official residences in the past. First official residence of the Lieutenant Governor was actually a, a very big tent. Since then, different buildings have been on different locations uh, throughout the city of Toronto. Um, the first built one being in Fort York, um, then destroyed in the uh, War of 1812 uh, by an invading army. And Simcoe picked one on the edge of the Don Valley called Castle Frank. And uh, that was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek name uh, after his son Francis. It wasn't until getting into the time of Confederation that uh, the province had grown enough to be thinking seriously about a, a very official residence, leading to the construction of the first government house on uh, King and Simcoe. And uh, where right now Thompson Hall stands, but there was uh, extensive railway development to the south of the building and um, industrial development. And so um, a new one was planned and this was a 14 acre piece of property named Charlie Park. Absolutely massive. It was of Buckingham Palace proportions and was easily the most grand uh, building uh, in all of Toronto, by far. During the Depression, when families couldn't afford seven tons of coal per winter to heat their house, Chorley Park used up 650 tons. The cost became a political issue, and although it was used as a hospital during World War II, it was eventually torn down. The Lieutenant Governor now has his offices at Queen's Park. By 1841, when the city had been lit by gas, residents could brag that everything was up to date. Traces can still be seen in pockets of Toronto, alongside some early masterpieces. The Bank of Upper Canada, the first post office, and just along King Street from St. James Cathedral, the Grand St. Lawrence Hall, which still anchors the city's most historic neighbourhood. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.